In today's experiment, we'll be using UV visible spectroscopy in order to determine the concentration of sodium salicylate in an unknown sample provided to you. The experiment will also provide excellent practice for you when using your analytical instrumentation, so you can take the opportunity to refine your technique using pipettes, burettes, and standard flasks. You'll be issued with an unknown sample and an array of 100 mil standard flasks. Take some 150 part per million standard sodium salicylate solution provided to you, fill your burette with that, and then use it to deliver an array of precisely known volumes into each of the standard flasks according to the table provided in your notes. Record the exact volume that you deliver on your result sheet, just in case it varies from the prescribed volume. Once you've delivered the correct volume for each standard solution, add approximately 5 mils of 6 by 10 to the minus 3 molar iron chloride solution to each of your standard flasks. The iron 3 plus forms a coloured complex with the salicylate iron, and it's that coloured complex that we'll be detecting when we conduct our UV visible spectroscopy. Once you've added your iron 3 plus, you can make each of these solutions up to the mark using the normal method. Progressively adding distilled water and mixing as you go, use your wash bottle when you get close to the top, and use a dropper to add those last few drops to make sure the bottom of the meniscus is on top of the line. Then mix each flask by inversion, at least 40 inversions per flask. Take your unknown solution and pour it into a clean dry beaker, You're collecting a 20 mil aliquot using your pipette and delivering it into a 100 mil standard flask. You'll complete this procedure twice so that you have two identical replicates of your unknown sample. This gives you a means of testing your precision for this experiment. Once all of your solutions are prepared, it's time to go to the UV visible spectrophotometer to measure the absorbance of your samples. An instruction sheet is provided. You can begin by adjusting the wavelength of your instrument. The first sample you'll need to measure is the blank, and then you go up from lowest concentration to highest concentration. As an example here, I've shown you how to prepare a sample. Fill your cuvette with the solution that you are ready to measure and discard it. Fill it again, discard it, give it a couple of rinses and then the third time you can fill your cuvette so it's almost full with the solution that you're going to use. Then take a Kim wipe and wipe off the outside of your cuvette. Make sure there is no liquid or fingerprints left on the outside. Notice an arrow is present on one side of your cuvette. Every time you load it into the instrument, make sure that arrow is facing the same way. Make sure it's facing forwards each time. Close. Close the sample hatch and you'll then be able to take an absorbance reading off your instrument, three decimal places. Note this down in your result sheet and then proceed to take this measurement for each of your other solutions. Sketching a standard curve at the end of the day will tell you whether or not you've prepared a sensible set of standards. If not, it would be in your best interest to go back and re-prepare any that don't produce a good standard curve. Before you go, it's essential that you enter your results on the spreadsheet at the back of the room. This isn't to provide a set of class results. This is for you to check to make sure that your standards are suitable for you to complete the write-up of this experiment. You'll be given an R squared value, which will tell you how good a straight line and best fit you should get for this experiment. I would like everyone to get R squared values that are at least 0.999, if not a bit higher. I've had people get 0.99999 in the past. I'm very close to one, so there's a challenge for you. And then once you're happy with your results, make absolutely certain that you note down your gradient and y-intercept values from the computer before you go. You'll need those in order to complete your write-up. So once again, just a reminder, today's experiment is an excellent opportunity for you to make sure that you're as accurate and precise as you possibly can be in the lab. So make sure you pay attention to your techniques, and if you have any questions about them, make the most of the opportunity. Ask your demonstrators for assistance. Hope you enjoy yourselves. All yours.